I think in stage three patients, almost everybody should be considered for systemic chemotherapy because there are adequate studies showing that single agent fluoropyrimidine lengthens progression free survival and also combinations of oxaliplatin plus fluoropyrimidine lengthen progression free survival compared to fluoropyrimidine alone. Therefore, unless there is a compelling contraindication or the patient refuses, I think everybody should be offered systemic therapy. The considerations in this case that are really driving us to strongly recommend it include the fact that they have a very high risk of recurrence based on the large number of lymph nodes involved. This patient has stage three disease. In fact, stage three C disease, the worst prognostic category in stage three. However, if we took a different example, if they had no lymph nodes involved, for example, they would be stage two. Now, stage two is an area where we actually have to spend quite a bit of time discussing with patients the pros and cons of taking systemic chemotherapy. The discussion I have with a patient that has stage two disease involves, first of all, trying to give them some sense of what their prognosis is with or without therapy. Here is where it's very critical to have information about microsatellite instability. A stage two patient that has microsatellite instability high tumor has such a good prognosis, and in fact, they don't benefit from a fluoropyrimidine regimen that we recommend they be observed only. But for a patient with microsatellite stable tumor, there are a number of ways to try to help them decide whether they want to take treatment. In a very simplistic discussion, one could quote the Quasar trial, where a group of patients that had mostly stage two disease were randomized to fluorouracil and leucovorin versus no systemic therapy after surgery. And there was about a 3.6% absolute survival benefit in that population who received the systemic 5-FU-based therapy. For other patients, they might want additional information about their tumor. Now, if they have a high-risk stage two, for example, they presented with obstruction or they had a perforation, they have T4, they have a poorly differentiated tumor, but are microsatellite stable, those individuals we would typically recommend they consider systemic therapy because their risk of recurrence is quite a bit higher than it is for patients without those high-risk features. But for the more typical patient without any high-risk features who's microsatellite stable, who wants a little bit more information about their tumor, then one could perform an Oncotype DX, which would give them information about a recurrence score which correlates with a risk of recurrence. For some individuals, if they had a sufficiently high risk of recurrence, that might uh, drive them to consider systemic therapy. In patients with stage two disease who opt to take systemic therapy, the only real consideration is single agent fluoropyrimidine, either fluorouracil plus leucovorin or capecitabine. Now, I would have to point out that there actually is not a randomized capecitabine study for stage two patients. The only data comes from stage three patients who are randomized to capecitabine versus no systemic therapy after surgery. However, most of the time we extrapolate from that clinical trial and would allow patients to consider capecitabine or fluorouracil and leucovorin for stage two disease. Exactly how long to treat them? Currently the standard is six months. Now in a stage three patient, as we mentioned before, there's a progression-free survival benefit for the addition of oxaliplatin to a fluoropyrimidine-based therapy. Therefore, in almost all stage three patients, we do recommend the addition of oxaliplatin. However, for individuals who would have excessive toxicity, or in some elderly individuals who may not tolerate the oxaliplatin particularly well, then capecitabine alone or fluorouracil and leucovorin alone certainly could be considered.